This brings us to the concept of potential energy. Energy is firstly defined as the ability to do work. We'll find later that that's not really a perfect definition, but it's a good start. So we can think of lifting an object, so we can think of that then as stored work. You lift an object, and if you let it go, then gravity can do work on it, bringing it back down. So in all cases, a potential energy is the energy of relative position of two objects. You can think of different types of this. Gravity, bringing objects closer to or farther away from the surface of the Earth. Springs, you can stretch or compress a spring. Other types of springs can be bent or twisted. Electric charges, some charges attract each other, others repel. So it takes work to bring them close together or farther apart. Chemical bonds are more complex manifestations of the interactions between electrical charges, and still they have a profile in which the force between the atoms depends on the distance between them and their orientation. In all cases, the potential energy is the work you can get from this so-called potential, which is this position-dependent interaction. The gravitational potential energy of an object is just the work required to raise an object to some height. You might say, well, this just depends on your coordinate system. Because whether you call a position, zero, negative, or positive, depends on where you set the zero of your coordinate system. And that's entirely correct. The potential energy of an object can be anything, and it indeed does depend on your choice of coordinate axes. It turns out, though, that we're always going to be interested in energy differences, and those are not dependent on our choice of coordinate axes. So again, the work required to raise an object of mass m to height h is mgh. That's also the same amount of work that gravity does lowering the object by a height h.